Hello, thank you for joining me. We're still at Finchley Central where we finished our last barrierless tube station video. There goes a train on the main line up to High Barnet. We're getting on this train here. This is the branch to Mill Hill East. So we're going to jump on because it is going in two minutes. Um, and um, I'm going to tell you a bit about the branch and um, we're going to do Mill Hill East as our final barrierless tube station video. So I've had quite a lot of fun over the last few days going around London recording these barrierless tube station videos. Um, been to quite a few, some on tube lines, some on subsurface lines, one or two underground, 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 you know, stations that don't have ticket barriers. Train coming in there. Well, it's a train going, must be a bus going over the bridge. Oh no, there is a train coming. There's a train going to Charing Cross, number five one six two one. So we're going to now travel along the original railway that opened in 1867. The line up to High Barnet opened later in 1872 and when, when this is new it was there would have been steam trains running along here and then it, in 1940 it became the London Underground. This line actually closed to steam trains in 1939 and then it reopened to, as an part of the Underground in 1941 and a train just pulled in so it looks like we might get to have a race for the first hundred yards of the branch. So if he goes out at the same time I go out, that'll be uh, quite fun. That's number 515194 versus number 51668. So, who is going to get to? There's like um, a lattice, it's not a bridge, but you know what I mean, a girder that goes over the track that carries, you know, all these wires for signalling you get by London Underground Line. So, I think the race is on. Well, our doors are closed. I'm not sure if his doors have. So, it looks like we're getting a head start. No, his doors are closing. He's going to. Is he going to catch us up? I don't think it's going to be quite as... Uh, sometimes I've come out of it and you get a really good race between the two trains. So the line, he was he's going to go up there. That's the lattice thing I said about. It's not really a lattice, but you know, a girder. So we've won, we got here first. The line up there, that goes to High Barnet. So that's where we were earlier on when we were... Let's show you on the map. When we did Woodside Park, we've just come to Finch Central. And now we're going to Mill Hill East. Now, there's quite an exciting feature along here. There's a nice, nice, can't really show you, sorry, but there's a lattice footbridge over the railway. I might have to go there one day and make some, take some pictures. So we're going through some quite nice posh suburbs of Finchley and Mill Hill. It's not a long line, it's only about a mile long. It's the only single track tube branch, because the Chesham branch is single track, but that's subsurface, and the Heathrow loop is a loop, so although it's single track, the trains only go one way. We're about to now travel over Dollis Brook Viaduct, which is the tallest structure on the London Underground. It passes over Dollis Brook. You may have seen when we did, here we are, this is Dollis Brook Viaduct. So there's some houses on that side, and there was a golf course on the other side. Um, you can just see it over there. You see a big stately home up there. It must be the estate, which is now the golf course, big Gothic style house. Apologies if you can't see it, but it's a lovely looking building. So um, it's, it's just under a mile along this branch. We're nearly at Mill Hill East. And I'm going to have a quick look at the station. That will be the end of this series. Of course, the line did carry on beyond Mill Hill East once as part of the abandoned Northern Heights project, which is, I'm not going to say when at this stage, but it's something I'd like to do a feature on in the future. We could have a look the next at possibly is um, Northern East, Heights. There's a Waitrose. I've just noticed there's a Waitrose. I didn't know about that. Um, go there and get coffee. Quite excited. I didn't know there was a waitrose in Mill Hill East, but you learn something new every day, especially when you travel around on tube trains. So I'm going to show you from here because the train's going to block the view. But this was built as double track infrastructure because it was originally meant to not be this stubby single track branch. It was meant to be a through route all the way up to Bushy Heath, but unfortunately that didn't happen because of the war. So we're going to go out, the door's going to open, out onto the platform. It's kind of wooden which is quite unusual. Now if you look that way, you can see where the line would have gone. Even once it became part of London Underground, steam hauled goods trains did carry on that way, but um, there were no signals. They'd have just had one loco beyond here at a time. So the one engine in steam principle. So it would have been quite fascinating. I can imagine like an N7 coming through here with a few wagons. Um, yeah, that's how it, how it would have been once. And I was saying at Finchley Central, when diesel briefly replaced steam to the goods yards on the main line, it must have been quite fascinating seeing even the diesel haul trains.
down there's the old station master's house. Station building's up here. What we're going to do, we're going to go to the front of the station just so we can have a look at the track and then we're going to go outside the station and be our final station we exit without passing through ticket barriers. Apologies you can't really see me very well at the moment, that's um, because it's very, very sunny. Well, there's the station building, if you look down there, that's the ticket office. So we get to the end of the platforms, and as I said about this being formerly double track infrastructure, you can see quite clearly this bridge. See, it was clearly built to accommodate two tracks. There's our train. Over there is a new housing development. So we're now going to exit the station. So I hope you enjoyed this series of barrierless tube station. Like I said, it isn't to promote ticketless travel. It's just to sort of show a bit of a quirk of London Underground. Because there's so many fascinated things about London Underground. And I just found it fascinating which stations have ticket barriers, how they fit them in, all that kind of thing. And then a network like London Underground where it's believed that every station has them. I just want to show you that a few don't. Whether they ever will or not, I don't know. Now, as far as I'm aware, I have covered every station that has ticket barriers, but if I have missed any, then please do comment and tell me. Another one that would have made it, if we'd done this a few years ago, would have been Kensington Olympia, but Kensington Olympia does now have ticket barriers. So we come down the steps. We just came from up there. We come down the steps. We're now going to go out through the ticket office, or should I say former ticket office, because they're now not actually ticket office. Well, you still buy from machines we're going to come out in front of the station and that will conclude our tour of barrierless tube stations so come out here there's a bus there i think he's going to turnpike lane might even jump on that you know well not that one but that route so that's mill hill east so from mill hill east our final barrierless tube station hope you enjoyed this series thank you very much for watching we may come here again if we do explore the old northern heights branch in the future but from mill hill east Thank you very much for watching and goodbye.